In today's video, we're going to be working on an easy way to make accurate cross cuts either with a circular saw or a track saw using the long reference edge. And if you don't know what that is, I'll show you. All right, guys, let's get started. You can see here behind me on the bench, I have a few tools set up that are precision for this type of work. Now, if you're just working on a construction site and you're using general lumber, two by fours and stuff to frame walls, yeah, it's okay, you know, they need to be straight, but they don't need to be that straight. And, you know, crown out and things like that will help keep the walls straight. As long as the pieces are the same size, when you're using rough lumber and you're doing rough framing, it's not finished work. You don't have to worry as much. So if the thing is slightly out of square, you can fix it. When you're th doing things with precision carpentry, now we're doing the barn beams. And the reason I'm filming this video today, it, this is important. When I talk about the long reference edge to get all of your pieces square and completely parallel uh, with one another on each edge, this is important. So um, I have a T-square here. This is a woodpecker's T-square. Uh, by the way, I'm going to show you all these tools. There's no sponsorships whatsoever, okay? These are just things that I have, and I'm going to tell you right now, some of them are super expensive. Some of them are not, uh, and I'm going to tell you which ones are accurate. This is extremely expensive. I have the 12 inch version and the 36 inch version. And unless you're doing the type of work that I'm doing and you really need this, or you're just a perfectionist and you have the money to spend, these are incredibly expensive. And if I was just doing this as a hobby, and there are, there are other tools out there that will give you the precision for half the price. They're very expensive. Okay, so um, I have it because I need it. And so it's making me money. I'm going to use this as um, a gauge just to show you how inaccurate your uh, lumber can be from if you're a hardwood dealer or your home center and how it can throw you off. Now, if you're looking to make a cross cut and you just grab this board and you take either a speed square, which now here's a, a good way that you can get a quick cross cut edge um, and an accurate edge too, keeping the uh, circular saw straight if you're not using a miter saw or a table saw. So let me angle the camera down and show you what I'm talking about. So I have here a circular saw and a speed square. What makes this easy is you can just take your speed square, you can butt your circular saw up against it, and as long as you're maintaining that speed square on edge here, you can run this circular saw along the speed square and you will get a nice straight cross cut along this piece of material. There's only one problem. From the factory, this is not square. So if you make a cross cut, all you're doing is cutting an edge that's not going to be 90 degrees. And then later on, you're gonna be chasing your tail when you're trying to build something and you think it's square and you're putting it together and everything is completely out of whack. Now you have a close up. This is gonna be the best way that I can give you this example by showing you kind of from my angle, straight at the board. This is a known good combination square, okay? I've checked it against my uh, woodpecker T-squares and it's completely accurate and set up perfectly. This is from eye gauging. This is um, moderately priced. I, I would definitely recommend it, not sponsored, but uh, it is a good combination square. And um, I have some videos about squaring up uh, lumber and stuff like that with, uh, with this involved and I show you how to do a bunch of things with combination squares. Uh, so check that out, that's on my channel. I'm gonna show you how out of whack this board is right now. Okay, so the first way is you would, this is your longest reference edge. So the length of the board will give you the best reference edge. That's the reference edge that you wanna use before you make a cross cut. If you wanna do any squaring of any lumber, you need to have a straight edge on your long grain first. So the side of your board that's the longest is the reference edge you wanna use. Make a straight line there, everything else will fall into place. So let's just, Assume that we're gonna work on this board here. It's now this I haven't touched it yet So this is from the home center and I'm gonna put my Combination square on it and I'm just gonna bring it down to the board like this and I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm gonna move the camera a little bit Let's see is that a good enough angle So can you see that gap at the back of the board there? I'm gonna put a flashlight. Okay, this is a good way to check. Do you see that light there? You See how much light's coming through that? You can actually see me going back and forth. 
a ton of it gets worse as it goes to the edge, right? So you have that light there, and then you come to the end here. You have just a little bit amount. You see, I'm, I'm moving back and forth. You don't really see any light there, okay? When I get over here, complete gap. Now, the way, another way I can show you, shut this flashlight off, get that out of the way. I will take this same combination square, put it up against that same edge. I'll bring it close to the edge of the board, and I'll draw a pencil line. So over here at the end of the board, where we referenced on the long edge, we're right at the, the point of the board. As we get down here to this end of the board, you can see how much out of square this is. If I take either a track saw, and I was to put it right along this edge with a, um, a track guide on there, or like most people do, throw it up against their miter saw fence or you know the the back of the miter saw the fence that comes with the miter saw not any extension fences just the miter saw itself throw it up against there make a cut all you're going to be doing is just making this cut out of square again that's all you're doing so you'll be cleaning up the edge but it would still be out of square now if you take a speed square like a lot of us do also in this situation where you have 12 foot boards you don't want to keep going back and forth to the miter saw and you put that speed square on the lumber and you run your circular saw along that and lo and behold you come back and it's still completely out of square so what do you do all right let's start with step number one all right step number one we need a straight uh long reference edge so since i showed you guys from this side of the board the squareness of this, or how, how, how not square it is. I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna use this now. This is the same edge because it was on the other side. I flipped it over. This is now the same edge that we were using for the demonstration. So, what I'm gonna do is, and you've seen me do this before, I showed you guys how to rip a straight line on boards that are too big for your Georgia. So the way we're going to get our straight edge is to rip off the least amount of material possible. So I'm going to get close to this edge here. And now I'll take my track saw and rip a straight line. Okay, that was step number one. We've established our straight edge. Now, I'll just move this out of the way. Okay, so for step two, what I'm going to do is flip the board over. And I need to cut this to seven inches. So remember, this is our long reference edge. So I'm going to make these two edges parallel. So I'm going to get the board to the size I need. And then once I have this board cut perfect width to seven inches, then I'm going to make my cross cut on the edge. So make a mark here. So once I get it on my mark here, all right, got my straight zero plastic edge strip right on the mark where I want to make the cut. I'm going to use these uh, micro jig uh, dovetail clamps. They slide into the bottom of the track. I'll get it right to the material, and then I will tighten it up. And when I go down to the other end, and I get it on the mark, this won't move. Now, a long time ago, I made this track guide for a circular saw. So basically it turns your regular circular saw into a track saw. Now I still have this. Now a lot of you guys have actually made this jig after seeing that video which was great. So now I still have it so I'm going to actually use it and I'm going to use it with my DeWalt saw and I'm going to show you how it would work with this homemade jig. So all you have to do is reference your long edge that you cut straight just take some 
quick clamps. And now I'll just run the circular saw right across the workpiece. Right on that edge. And look at that. It's absolutely amazing. This is perfectly square. If you have your smaller track not attached to your longer tracks, then you could just take your small track, put it across the edge here, take a good speed square and reference it along the track and make your cut. You square everything up. What I'm going to do is take my speed square, lock it into my hip, and I'm going to run my track saw close to the edge, but not too much because I want to just take off a tiny amount of material here. Okay, so I do want to show you really quick with the light test again. And you can see flashlight here and we're going back and forth and there's no light coming through this time like there was before. And so after I strike my line here and see that my lines are nice and even on both sides, you could always come back, double check your work here by going on the edge that you cut and then backtracking a line down the reference edge of the board and you can see that the lines are exactly the same distance from edge to edge. All right, so like I said, the most important thing is that you reference yourself on the long edge of the board. Get a nice straight edge on the long grain, the length side of the board. Once you get that straight edge, make the other side parallel, and then you can square off your ends of the board. Once you square everything up, then you're ready to, you're ready to go. As, as long as you're working with lumber that's not completely twisted and warped and things like that, then those straight edges will give you the perfect finish that you need to make your project and you won't be chasing your tail trying to put things together. Now obviously for me I don't have to worry so much about these boards being surfaced on the faces. We can get into that later when I talk about milling lumber. That's coming up soon because I'm going to be doing sliding barn doors and we're going to make them from scratch and we need to start off with really thick boards to get them to the size we need and for them to stay straight we need to mill them, dry them out and I'll show you that whole process so definitely stay tuned for that. But right now since we're building these barn beams the next thing we're going to be doing is actually building the beams using that method that I showed you in my other video with the new technique that I was going to use with the router and making the rabbits on the side and joining the sides that way. Nice, strong, quick, easy joint and the finish looks perfect on it. All of these tools that I used here I'm going to be putting a link in the description box below, so make sure you check that description box. A lot of people, they put in the comments, you know, how do I get this? What is that tool called? This and that. If you just look in that description box, there's a little arrow that, that you can hit, and that will drop down the whole description that I write in there that has all the links to all the tools that I use in the videos, and they're all the same price that you're going to pay. You're not paying any extra for it. I just get a small commission from you purchasing it through the Amazon link that I give you. There's no extra cost on those tools, all right? So just make sure that you guys know that, okay? Um, I'm not sponsored by any of these tool companies right here. I'm showing you things that most people either have or they're looking to get for their projects and their woodworking that they're going to do. So just uh, make sure you check those things out. All right, guys, so these things are stuff, this is stuff that I use all the time. So I'm not gonna mislead you and, and tell you buy this and buy that. These are the things that I use. You see what I use? I'm showing you that they work Take that the way you want. I mean, I would, I would take that as a good sign. All right, guys. So um, let's move on to building these things in the next video. I hope you guys will join me by hitting the subscribe button and being there for every step of the upcoming builds that I'm doing. I'm working on a really large project. Most of you know that. So I hope you guys got really uh, good information out of this, and I hope you guys are enjoying the videos. So I'm trying to put them out just about once a week. It does get kind of difficult to do when you're trying to you know, do a job at the same time. And like I said, I'm not on this all day long. I'm going to work. I come home. I do this. I try to do the YouTube.
YouTube. It's very challenging. All right, guys, so bear with me, all right? I'm doing the best I can here. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Definitely give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. There's a picture of a notification bell. If you click on that little notification bell, it will notify you every time I upload a video. All right, guys, thanks for joining me in the shop. I will see you next time. Hopefully, we can start getting this thing built.